Shalom, my friends. It's so wonderful to be with you again today. And welcome from me and also from my friend, uh, David Nekritman. And you know, it's so amazing to be here in Israel. We want to bring you news and interviews from the land of Israel. Our studio also is situated in the hills of Jerusalem. And we know that Jerusalem is the, is the heartbeat of the universe. So it's very special, please. When you watch and if you are interested and it's touching you, just speak with your friends and your family and you can watch the program again on our website. And I think it's important because there is thing that we are saying and sometimes you want to chew on it and you want to uh, listen to it again and it's available for you, okay? So it's wonderful to be with you today. David, thank, Hi again. You, thank you again to be able to come today and spend time with us. Uh, David Nekrutman is the direct, executive director of CGCUC, which is a center for Jewish and Christian understanding and cooperation. And it's very important. There is some beautiful thing that's happening here in the land. Uh, some wow moments that we are having, I would say, Every week right now is is taking our breath away. I appreciate that. You yeah. Know, yeah. Last uh, you were at the Bible session last night. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about Abraham's balancing of universal his universal mission and mm -hmm. his particular covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But for him, God of Abraham mm -hmm. at that particular point in time. But we also launched the uh, the first Arabic speaking Bible study right after our Bible study on Wednesday nights. So that was a, a miracle moment that took seven years of relationships of developing with the local Christian Arab community here. That started off with a cup of coffee with uh, Pastor Stephen Corey, mm -hmm. uh, who has nine ministries, both in the state of Israel and the Palestinian territories. Mm -hmm. And that, well, I thought it would be a 15 minute conversation over a cup of coffee seven years ago with Pastor Corey turned into a four hour conversation at that time, and a beautiful relationship between building up relations between the Israeli Jewish community and the Palestinian and Israeli Arab communities. So the fruits of that, of all these years coming together, is our honor of having Pastor Corey actually give a Bible study at the Bible Lands Museum uh, once a month. At um, yeah, once a month. I think it's, it's just amazing because when you go into this museum, you discover and, and again you, you emphasize how much you have the Mesop Mesopotamian uh, culture and you have the Egyptian culture and Israel is in the middle. And Abra Abraham, God called him, hey, come out of Ur and come, come in, in Canaan, which was the land uh, at that time called. And like yesterday, the, the journey, the Bible journey that we've done with Abraham uh, took really our breath away. Right, so you're talking about like every Wednesday night we have a, a Bible class for, mm -hmm. for the local Christian community and visitors who are coming to Israel mm -hmm. and that they can interface with the Hebraic roots of their faith through the staff of the Center for Jewish Christian Understanding and Cooperation. And with the support of the museum. With the support of the museum. So yeah. we. We are now headquartered at the Bible Lands Museum, and we moved there for the reason of having the visual um, effect of how to look at scripture. So using artifacts that date back to that time mm -hmm. and using it as part of the Bible lessons literally makes scripture jump out of the page and say, oh, I never thought of it from that particular point in time. And so, yes, Abraham had to deal with the Mesopotamia paganisms, mm -hmm and the Egyptian paganism. And there are two types of paganisms, but what you have for today is secularism. Mm -hmm. So the paganism never went away. It it's, just, just it's just changed into a different, different presentation. Mm -hmm. But it's still at the end of the day, Mesopotamia is very much about how can I utilize God for myself, gods, God. yeah. for it's myself, little, God. <laughs> little gods. And then Egypt is, has a lot, you know, they're very wealthy, well to do, but they're dealing with a lot of immorality issues mm -hmm. and thinking that the king is God mm -hmm. as opposed to the king is just a regular human being and there's really the God out, the true, real true God out there. And Abraham is in the epic center. And he has to deal with both of this. And his mission is 
to get everyone to know what God is about. And what was really interesting, what Pesach Luliki did last night was the altar that every time that Abraham is building is a public works about advertising God in the heart of both of these paganisms mm -hmm. and saying, hey, we need to go ahead and think about God in a totally different way. It really touched me also when he was speaking about uh, Ami Melek. Like, again, it, it was like a king, the Philistine king. And again, Abraham went to Egypt and things happened with Pharaoh and all of that. And suddenly, Abraham again goes to the Philistines and they are discovering the God of Abraham. Right. And they're sure of this affirmation of the God of Abraham yeah. and not so sure how to deal with it. They, they acknowledge it and you see it in the words. I think what Rabbi Pesach Wilicki said, and I think we want to take this as an idea for a book, mm -hmm. that small talk in the Bible is very important. We are usually not privy to conversations. Mm -hmm. And when their conversation does happen, then is a major teaching moment. Mm -hmm. So biblical small talk maybe an idea for a book later on, and actually look at, especially Genesis, when there is a lot of conversation happening, to analyze then what is the teaching moment from that. As, and we always teach that, you know, the Bible is nuanced, the language is exact. Mm -hmm. and, and if something is redundant or emphasizing something more than we normally would why, have, why, 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 why? Yes, let's look at I it and agree. try to and discover it. And this is the beauty of learning together. We, we're in this journey, both as uh, people who believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, walking I agree, in this. I agree, I agree. And, and again, when you speak about that, we haven't spoken too much about the Hebrew language during the Bible studies. I don't know if he's... Uh, he, he did. He talked about Abraham and Avram. Okay. And yeah. the word Avram is that he is a leader of where That's he comes true. from. Of multitude. Right. And then it becomes Avraham, with the hay stuck in there. And then becomes, instead of just a personality in his hometown, he is the man on the ground yeah, right. to represent God. So he did. He touches upon the Hebrew language. We, I do that in my, my sessions when I'm given the opportunity to do the Bible session. But yeah, we do an emphasis on the Hebrew language. We always talk about, if you actually look at the translations, they don't really necessarily sync up mm -hmm. to the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And that's the teaching moment as well. Mm -hmm. So Rabbi Pesach Wiliki will be coming out. Uh, with a book entitled Cup of Salvation, taken out from, from the praise psalms of Psalms 130 to 118. Mm -hmm. and the Hallel. The Hallel is, is known as Hallel. And actually looking at God's word, grammar, mm -hmm. and how it's functioned in these verses to bring out the teaching point. Mm -hmm. So this is like really up your alley. This is everything I about know. the Hebrew language and the translation now is totally different. So we're actually bringing out a new translation on these, new, on these six Psalms oh, based upon analyzing yeah. the Hebrew. So when that comes out, I mean, Pesach, well, Pesach went through a whole transformation moment in writing the book. He had one idea and then he would say, in Hebrew we have something called the siyata deshmaya, the inspiration of God involved in this work. And he just became, he said, when I came in, I thought one thing came out and I've been transformed through the process of this. And the reason why we're doing it is because we have the day to praise, right? We come together, we do a local event, a Hallel event. Which is new. Which is again. very new. It started in yeah. uh, Feast of Tabernacles 2014, mm -hmm. where we invited Christians into a synagogue expression of Hallel. And we praised God together as mandated in Psalm 117 that the nations would come together and praise God with us. And I remember I had again a, a wow moment last year. I mean, yeah, in 2016, when during, during this day of Alel, and, and you said in front of everybody, you were opening the door of our synagogues right. for, for you. And when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what we've been waiting because you're like the older brothers. You know about the, the Word of God. You've been studying for so many years. And he's like, it's time now to get all these things. We want it. Right. We need it. It's very hard on our side of the, of the aisle because a lot of times interfaith prayer is, is kind, of, kind of a taboo thing within the Orthodox Jewish world. Mm -hmm. But I, f I found a way using psalms, praise psalms, actually to bring both of us together to have this moment because it can't, I believe that I, I'm part of a sacred calling in life, mm -hmm. of being the bridge between Jews and Christians, 
having a better relationship between one another, understanding there are differences and we're going to respect that and walk in mystery, but the commonalities and how we work together, it's not only has to deal with soup kitchens necessarily, but also having these moments of spiritual connection with one another while we're praising the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's the Hallel. So when Pesach Liliki came aboard uh, almost a year and uh, three months ago, mm -hmm. uh, he came in with a Hallel service and he was looking at this and when he actually had one of our Hallel services when we had each foreign language come up mm -hmm. and recite Psalm 117 in their own language, mm -hmm. he was like, do you understand what just happened in this room? And I just said, yeah, these guys came up, they said, in their own language. He said, no, but you just, we're fulfilling this, this thing. And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I'm so involved in the logistics of the event that I'm not taking in what just happened. And even Rabbi Riskin, who I work for, Rabbi Shlomo Riskin was the chief rabbi of Frat. We consider him like the Billy Graham of Judaism. He was look, he was like, he was almost shaking. He's like, do you understand what just happened here? And I'm like, and everyone's telling me what just happened in the room. So we, I'm involved in something that's bigger than me, and sometimes maybe I don't appreciate the moment that what's happening mm -hmm. because you're, so much, there's so much involved mm -hmm. in making sure all the sensitivities are taken care of, and there's little practical logistics of putting an, an event together, but people who are experiencing it raises up their spirituality and journey with God. That's what the accomplishment is. Imagine doing that now together instead of separate faith communities. And I think that's the most important part of what we're doing, is that we're not in separate communities, we are mandated together to repair the world on the, the bringing the kingdom of heaven down unity, to earth. Unity, unity, which is echad, echad. which is a mean universe. Right. Like we're not the same, but we can come together. Unity doesn't mean sameness. Exactly. exactly. So we each have our own individual uh, religious experience, mm -hmm. but we're coming together mm -hmm. for this moment in unity. And when you say that, this is when you see these things happening. It reminds me again the passage that I was reading um, in Proverbs 8.31 that I was speaking to you a bit about it. It's like wisdom is saying, I delight to be with the son of man. And like in Hebrew, if I'm saying it properly, it's like Sha'ashua'i, Sha'ashua'i, et bene Adam. And it's like, for me to read it again, like speaking about the Hebrew language, is like suddenly so cutting. Yeah, God wants to spend time with us. Exactly. Right. But it's like, it's not just knowing it there. It's right. like discovering that he wants, is his delight. He, he wants that so much. And for you to know, Sha'ashua'i, Sha, Sha is also a name for amusement and playful and, and enjoyment. So there is all these things where it can be put in, I, I delight in, in the presence of, with the, yeah, with the presence of, of the Son of, of Man. Um, the amazing thing when I was reading again, Psalm 119, you see King David in, in Psalm 119, I can't remember the exact uh, verse, it's 40, 50 something. There's a lot and of verses in there. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of verses. <laughs> and, and, and he's saying exactly the same. He said, my delight, shua, shua shuai, again, is in the Torah, is in the word, is the way. Right, the Torah, the Torah is the way you connect with living. God. Yes. Because it's a living, breathing document. That's it. It's a divine document. That's it. And my favorite verse is, taste and see that God is good and then you shall take refuge in him. Ta'amu, that word is so much about, ooh, I'm involved totally in the experience uh, I like of his God. taste. I it's mean, a taste. Ta Imagine ta you're saying taste and, and see God. That's a huge concept. This is exactly, I mean, when you say that, so this is what all we are discovering is that God is amazing and God wants to be so much involved with us right. and he wants us to be involved with each other. Exactly. Right. Which is love of God is great, but it also has to in t incorporate the love of each one because we're all created in his image. Exactly. And when you see that, I'm, I'm so thrilled. So, I mean, obviously, us who are happy to have the Bible studies, like Christian and, and Jewish people together. But what I'm so thrilled to see is with these Christian Arabs and some Palestinians coming 
to have the word of God too. And like, I know that the way of thinking are going to be so different because they're going to discover the word of God in his context. Right. And it's going to make their way of thinking like, is that going to be a revolution? You're, you're, you're very prophetic right now. I'm very much practical in, in the sense uh -huh. it's just the, just the idea of them coming mm -hmm. and taking a chance and being in this situation with us. For me, that, that in itself is a miracle. Uh, and actually going ahead and part of that relationship and that trust was developed because we went ahead and every week we deliver food to the Palestinian Christians. Every week? Every week we deliver, it's called Blessing Bethlehem. And uh, Pesach, Rabbi Pesach Willicki is like the face of it. Mm -hmm. But it took years of going ahead and developing the relationship and every week we deliver food to the Palestinian Christian community who are financially challenged and we put food on the table, literally. Mm -hmm. Fruits and vegetables so they can eat during the week. Uh, but that's part of who we think we are as a Jewish people in who are covenanted, living in a covenant land, but it comes with covenant responsibility. Mm -hmm. And Christians, unfortunately, are caught between ethnicity and religion. It's not easy for them. Uh, so we feel in our heart as a center for Jewish Christian understanding mm -hmm. and cooperation. Mm -hmm. The cooperation means that I have to go ahead and really take in consideration how my Christian brothers and sisters feel and how we can alleviate some of the pain and suffering they're going through. Mm -hmm. So this is our small way of uh, coming together and helping out a community that really needs help. And when I, I tell people, when you pray for Israel, pray for your Christian brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Supporting Israel is great with the Jewish people, but it can't be compromising your own religious brothers and sisters within, in that, in, within the Christian faith. Which, when, when you speak about that, is like going again very practical, pray for the peace of Jerusalem Again, the Hebrew name is Sha'alu, which is like inquiring. It's like I'm asking God, what do I have to do today Correct. for helping? Exactly. So it's something very active. Right. It's not just praying like spiritual thing. And, and I think we need to go back to all these things. And again, friends, if you want to help the center, uh, you, can, you can go onto the website and you, help, you can help donating, you can pray, and you can donate, which is like wow, the I appreciate thing. the plug. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, it's, it's because I think it's, it's so important. We have to look after our brothers and our sisters. And life is tough right now in Israel. I mean, we had like a, a terror act. By the way, this morning I was reading that some Arab Muslim are saying, we are fed up to see these things, and they are starting to say it in so social media, uh, which is a lot of, they need to have a lot of courage, but this is, we, I think Israel, I will be very honest, Israel has done enough. Maybe you can always do two more, but it's, I, I think you've done a lot of things, and it's like the people have to make the decision now, saying, hey, now it's us who have to do something too. Right, but I think the phenomenon you're experiencing, especially from last year to now, mm -hmm. is a different phenomenon than the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The people are involved in some of these horrific attacks are mm -hmm. Israeli Arab Muslims. They're residents of the state of Israel. This is a little different. Terror. terror attacks happening. There, yes. I mean, the guy was an Israeli truck driver. You're talking about yes, the, the truck driver that killed uh, four soldiers yes. at the Haas Promenade. Uh, for me, the Haas Promenade is very special because that's where the Day of Prayer for the Peace yes. of Jerusalem happens on the first Sunday of every October, mm -hmm. which came from my office 16 mm -hmm. years ago with R Reverend Robert Stearns. Mm -hmm. So for me, this, is, this was like when I heard where this, this attack happened, I was like, oh my God, I know where that is. Mm -hmm. I go there every year. Uh, but the four soldiers got killed. But it was a truck driver, mm -hmm. an Israeli Arab, who is here in Israel. And yes. that's the scary part of what's happening with some of these attacks is like, I think for, we're caught off guard. We don't understand why certain people are doing what they're doing and they have the freedom of religious expression. Sure. They have okay. benefits uh, of mm -hmm. health insurance and education. Of course, things could be better and we're trying to be doing more. The muni but, the, yeah. but at the end of the day, why, why are you doing this? And the risk you're taking 
sometimes you don't even know when you're doing a bombing on a on a bus, you're all, especially in Jerusalem, both Arabs and Jews sure. take the bus, both Arab and Jews take the train here. And so it's, but, it's, it's, you would call it satanic forces within Christianity, that there's something happening, this evil that's happening. I do hope that the Muslim leadership can be better in the way they don't go ahead and foster hate in their sermons against Israel. This so is it's an educational thing. process yeah. while we are trying to go ahead and it's, give a message of peace. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times the Bible says peace and our prayers talk about peace. We would hope the same thing can happen on the Muslim side that could be talking more ways of peace. Which is what I was saying, like, is also, I mean, when sometimes it's a bit difficult for me to see the difference. I know there is Palestinians who are living in, in in Palestinian controlled neighborhoods. Yes. Right. Um, in but Judea you have, and Samaria. But like I speak also about the Muslim who live in the region. Right. Because they they are first of all Arab. Oh no, sorry, they are first of all Muslim. Do you and, understand? And, they're, and, they're, and uh, for the state the of Israel, in the state of Israel, they're Israeli citizens or Israeli residents. Yeah. From our point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could put their nationality or their religious expression beforehand. That's it. Okay, that's different. And there the are same. some who are Israeli citizens who identify themselves as Palestinian, mm -hmm. and that is Israeli. That's it. Correct. This is, which is more like, again, I mean, I see we, we are doing things because we've been brought up in a certain way. Yes. Do you understand? Right. So it's like when, when I see what you are doing with the Bible studies with the Christian Palestinians and Israeli, Christian Israeli Arabs. Yeah, it's it is a it is definitely a game changer as far yeah. as how to how to develop the relationship based upon a spiritual, and not on a political basis. Mm -hmm. But, but again, it, it's like the source it's a revolution. What's changing. Yeah, we're changing minds, that's that's right? It, but again, it. you can't have that if they don't are not willing to go through the process with you. So as much as we. Pr as much as we uh, work with the Bible Lands Museum and the Center for Jewish Christian Understanding and Cooperation to create the platform yeah. for that, yeah. at the end of the day, it can't happen without people. Sure. And the people have to trust you. And, but that trust took seven years mm -hmm. to build. And, that, and, and the fruits of that labor is that we can have a Christian pastor come and give a Bible study that's not church-based. You know, it's not affiliated with any church. It's just simply we're learning. And he taught about Abraham as well which was, it wasn't in sync with Pesach Wiliki's message that evening as well. Mm -hmm. Abraham became this focal point where we can all come and, and learn from and his biography. That's I love the book of Genesis. It's one of my favorite me books. Me too, me too. There is so many things. It's like a DNA that you have to end on slowly, slowly to be able to see humanity. I will love also maybe sometime that we do a, um, a journey into Hebron because okay. Hebron was a place of uh, Abraham yes. where a lot of things happened. The first real estate purchase. Exactly. Yeah. And it was where Sarah was um, buried and Abraham was buried there. And again, Isaiah, Isaac Isaac and Rebecca and then Jacob and Leah. Yeah. Mother Rachel is buried. Uh, but I was thinking ab else. about Abraham right. who was buried there. And Isaac and Ishmael came for the for the for the burial. for the funeral. So again, Hebron is very Egypt. important. Isaac and Ishmael came for the yes, ex yeah. extremely important. Yeah. It's if Christians believe they're grafted into our covenant, mm -hmm. and their 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 roots is with us, mm -hmm. then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob buried in Hebron, mm -hmm. right, with our biblical foremothers as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then. Why wouldn't you pay a visit to the uh, I know I, to the grave site <laughs> of your spiritual forefathers? Rabbi Riskin is very much into like you didn't visit your your grandmother, I, I love your this grandfather. Place. Like you, I love you this, place. this is the opportunity when you're in Israel not to visit. It, it, it is perplexing. Yeah, I think it's very important. Again, oh, time flew. Time flow. Time flow. <laughs> time flow. You're very we right. covered a lot. Yes. In this, yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you again for coming sure. and communicate with our friends. Friends, we are so happy to bring you what's happening here in the land of Israel, and spe especially also here in Jerusalem. And from David and from me, we say bye, and we send you loads of shalom, of peace, from the land of Israel.
bye for now. So wonderful to be with you again today and uh, I really hope that you enjoy to learn the Hebrew letters. So today we are looking at the 14th letter, which is the letter Nun. This letter is beautiful. Nun is like also represent uh, the faithfulness of God. So there is a beautiful passage in Deuteronomy which speak about the God who is faithful, who is trustworthy. And so we say, Ha'el Ha'ne'eman. You know, he is so faithful. And there is also the numeral numerical value of Nun and is 50. And there is also a beautiful name who starts by Nun is Ner. And Ner means lamp. And like here in Israel, there is some children who are called Neria, which means the lamp, Ner. Ia is from Ia. So he, is, he, he carried the lamp of God, which is a beautiful name. So there is a beautiful passage in the Psalm 119 who start all with the letters of Nun and is this beautiful passage that I'm sure that you know is like the word is a light into my feet and a, a light into my path. And this is a beautiful, beautiful passage. So again, it's the name Ner. Okay. So. Today, we look at two names that you can remember easily. We look at Ner, which is a lamp. And we look also at God who is so faithful, Ha'el Ha'ne'eman. This is what we've done today. I hope that you enjoyed that and see you next week. Bye. I hope that you really enjoyed this uh, nugget of the Hebrew language. And from me and from uh, David today, we say bye. We send you lots of love from Israel and see you next week.